Welcome back to Red and Blue. I'm Robert Costa. Two candidates vying for Ohio's open Senate seat this November faced off in a contentious debate last night. Democratic Congressman Tim Ryan and Trump-endorsed Republican J.D. Vance, they fought over issues including the economy, immigration, and health care. Ohio has been trending to the right in recent cycles, but Ryan making a populist pitch to working people has surprised some by making it a tight race. During the debate, the Senate rivals, they tackled the issue of crime. So we've got to increase funding for law enforcement, we've got to protect law enforcement, and we've got to do something that Tim Ryan failed to do, which is stop the leadership of this country from going after qualified immunity. Here's what qualified immunity does. It provides legal protections for our police officers when they do their jobs. They need that so that they can attract the right people. We need more cops. We need better paid cops. And yeah, we've got to get rid of bad cops. We need more technology and equipment. I've brought back almost $500 million for law enforcement here in Ohio. And when I get to the Senate, I will continue to do that. CBS News did reach out multiple times to the Vance campaign to join us tonight for an interview, and we did not have a, a reply to our request for that interview. Joining us now is Congressman Tim Ryan, the Ohio Democrat and Senate nominee. Congressman, thanks for being here on Red and Blue. We appreciate your time. After last night's debate, which we just heard a bit of, have you heard from the Biden White House or Senate Democratic leaders at all? And have they made a commitment of more resources in your race? No, we haven't heard from anybody. Uh, you know, last two public polls have us up three points. We're, you know, got a bunch of grassroots supporters that are helping us. And, you know, we're prepared to go it alone here. Uh, but we're going to win it. And that, I think that's going to be uh, something that's going to be good for everybody because I'll, I'll get to D.C., you know, knowing that we did this on our own. And, you know, I'll be an independent voice for Ohio, which is kind of what we want. That's a striking thing to hear on your own. It's October 11th, the election less than a month away. At this point, is the Democratic Senatorial Campaign Committee doing enough and spending enough in Ohio? You know, I, I mean, I would like to think that, that you have a candidate uh, that's up three, blue collar uh, guy from outside of Youngstown, Ohio, kind of the, you know, area of the country, the kind of, uh, you know, groups of people, working class people, whether they're white or black or brown, men or women, working class people that I'm connecting with in a very significant way, pulling significant, uh, you know, Republican voters and independent voters. Uh, you you would think they would want to be uh, actively engaged in this race, that it would be good for us to win the seat, but also good for the party. Um, but, you know, we'll have to see. They got a lot of different, uh, you know, calculations that they got to make. We're prepared to go at, go at this on our own. But I'm telling you, we're going to win the race because the other advantage is, you know, J.D. Vance is, is losing support. He's losing Republican support. And after the debate last night, our phones are ringing off the hook with Republicans, Republican donors, Republican voters that want to come help. So, you know, we've got a lot of momentum now. We just got to keep it going. You're, you're calling yourself an independent voice running, for, uh, running as a Democrat. You have choices to make in the coming weeks. Do you want President Biden to come to Ohio and publicly campaign with you in this final lap? No, no, I won't be asking the president to come in or um, very, very few, if any, national people, um, you know, to come in and actually campaign with us um, because I, I want to be the main face, the main messenger uh, of, the, of this campaign. I grew up in Ohio. I'm Ohio in my bones. My wife is from just outside the Youngstown area like me. She's a 20 year public school teacher. Our kids go to public schools. Like we're just, you know, we're an Ohio family that wants to connect with other Ohioans. And I don't think anybody can come in like Trump coming in for J.D. Vance actually was an absolute net negative for him. I, you know, it's, it's like run your own race, stand on your own two feet. That's what Ohioans want. And that's what I'm going to do. Congressman, the January 6th committee run by some of your colleagues in the House holding a hearing on Thursday. Does that committee and its work matter at all? in your race, the Ohio Senate race, and is its work breaking through with voters? Well, I think it's breaking through in the sense that it is really narrowing that group of extremists who are who will continue to try to defend the indefensible. And I think it's the, the unique part about it is it's a great service to our democracy. Kudos to Liz, Liz Cheney. Kudos to 
uh, you know, Adam Kinzinger, the Republicans who are showing great courage. But it's also speaking to that sliver of the electorate that is also probably Republican or independent minded that are also concerned about the Dobbs decision. They're also concerned about what happened with the Supreme Court and the overreach on the issue of choice and then nullifying same sex marriages and wanting to go down the road of birth control. It, it opens the door to the conversation of the extremism. And so in that regard, I think it's helpful to pull a lot of those voters over. And J.D. Vance is in with the Marjorie Taylor Greens, the Lindsey Graham and a national abortion ban. Ted Cruz is in campaigning for him. So all of these people are kind of highlighting the fact that J.D. Vance is in with the Looney Tune group of the Republican Party. And so those moderates and independent voters, it'll give them more reason to come our way. You just mentioned birth control. Abortion rights has galvanized some voters across the country in the wake of the Supreme Court overturning Roe v. Wade. To what extent is this issue galvanizing Democrats and some others in Ohio? Is it dramatically changing the dynamics in your race? Well, we, re we registered 90,000 people uh, to vote in the month of August. We're still waiting on the September numbers, but they're going to be blockbuster. Um, we've seen the college campuses. I was just down at Miami of Ohio the other day, they registered 2,000 people on campus to vote. Uh, so there are going to be thousands of young people energized, women energized. We, we were right beneath, Ohio was right beneath Kansas as far as uh, registering new people to vote. And we saw what happened with the referendum in Kansas. I think that's going to be even stronger in the month of September. So it's, it's animating the electric big time. And I think, again, it's speaking to those moderate, Republican, independent-minded voters who see this as big government overreach into the private lives of individual citizens. Like, this is big government. This is in our bedroom, in our doctor's offices. And people don't want that in Ohio. We want the government out of our business in Ohio. So in that sense, it's opening the door again to this broader conversation about how extreme these groups are. And in the final weeks here, you're going to have to make a decision in this major Senate race in Ohio, how you lean into certain issues. Yesterday, I interviewed uh, Senator Bernie Sanders of Vermont. He told CBS News that Democrats do need to put an emphasis on abortion rights, but he argued they also need to make sure they're countering Republican overtures to working people. In other words, to not just talk about abortion. Is, is Senator Sanders right? Yeah, we, we have to have a robust economic message going into the last three or four weeks here. Without a question, if we go all in on one issue, that would be wrong because gas is still, you know, in the high threes, 375, 385, depending on where you're at. You know, bread, milk, all the all these uh, costs are still high. And so you have to speak to that. I've been calling for a tax cut for working people. But if you don't recognize the economic strain that people are under, and it is solely about the Dobbs decision, I think that would be a huge mistake for Democrats. So I would encourage you know, anybody running right now to make sure you have a robust economic message, as well as the big government overreach and the violation of personal freedom that, that came with the Dobbs decision. This is a marquee Senate race. Congressman Tim Ryan, Democrat of Ohio, we appreciate you taking the time. Thank you. Th thanks for having me, Robert.